Okay, so we're back and we have a lot of really cool accessories that will be going on the new Caravan five by eight foot utility trailer that I picked up from Tractor Supply a little while back. Paid a thousand bucks for the trailer. Really, 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 really well constructed trailer. I have to admit, I'm super, super impressed by a lot of what I see. The last video upgrade we did on this, we stained the deck of it black. So it had your standard pressure treated lumber two by six for the decking planks, but we stained it all black so it looks really good. We installed a handle here on the front as well, which is really nice, that'll help us move it around. These are plastic handles, but they are designed for toy hauler trailers. It's a big door on the back as a replacement. So I think we'll be perfectly fine here. We have a lot of cool stuff going on. So today we'll be installing some E-Track on the sides here. I have some additional little clamps and D-rings that we'll be putting on. Um, I ordered two of these, but only one was available at, at the moment. So they're gonna send me a second one, but these essentially are stabilizing feet for the very back. So if we don't have anything hooked up to the front, or even if we do, and I'm gonna be loading something like a tractor or something on the back, these will keep the front from coming up, which is really nice. These I believe support about 600, 650 pounds each. So we'll be installing one on each side. We'll probably put one on today. And then when we get the second one in, we'll install that. Some LED lighting, which will be going on the back as a direct replacement to the incandescent bulbs that are back there. This is a really cool one. So this is the quick pin coupler from Kurt. You guys saw me feature this on the channel a while back when I was visiting eTrailer. This is super cool because it doesn't have your traditional coupler lock, right? This is gonna replace this assembly right here and you simply put a pin through it as opposed to having to latch that lock. That's gonna make it really convenient. Not that that's a bad setup, that's a very tried and true setup, but for what we're gonna be using this trailer for, this is simple and simple is always better in my opinion. This is gonna work out really, really well. Again, you just drop it on the ball, throw the pin in and you are good to go. And then finally, this Ram Jack. So, we specifically chose this one because it's inexpensive and it accomplishes a lot. And it has 1,500 pounds worth of support, which of course that's pretty much the weight of the trailer fully loaded almost. That said, we did not get this in black because the black version costs quite a bit more. And we just wanted to keep this entire project as affordable as possible. It does have the two wheels on it, but all of these accessories right here added up, adds up to about 250, 300 bucks worth of total accessories that we're gonna be adding to the trailer, which is really nice. So whenever we take a product like this and we start adding to it, we wanna be sure that you know we're very smart in terms of what we add. And I think adding this front jack is gonna be really cool. Even though you can simply pick it up and move it around, if we have like a tractor on here or a lawnmower or something on here that's relatively heavy, it's not gonna be nearly as easy to pick that up if we're not hitched up to a vehicle. So being able to roll it around is gonna be really nice. Plus, you know, it's less work for your back. Lifting this up, rolling the trailer around, it's not super heavy, it's not too bad, but it is, uh, it is gonna put a little bit of strain on you when you do that, especially if you have anything on the trailer. So adding all of this to the trailer is probably gonna add about 50 pounds total, I'm guessing. Maybe about 20 for the front jack here, another 20 for both pieces of E-Track plus the stabilizing legs. The lights are gonna be a swap out, so that's not gonna be anything. These probably actually weigh a little less and the coupler is probably gonna weigh a little less as well. So we're not really eating into the cargo capacity that much of this trailer. But we have more upgrades to come. We're gonna go ahead and get all this stuff installed, then I'll come back to you and show you what we did and how we did it. Okay, so we're back and we are almost complete with the accessory upgrades that we're putting on here, except for a few of them, and I'll explain why. So we mounted the front rolling tongue jack up here. It's also a swivel tongue jack, so it gives us the ability to actually raise this thing and rotate it out of the way like that, which I think is super cool. I also like the fact that when it's rotated up like that, it is below this rail here. So whenever we mount the toolbox on top of it, we don't have to worry about it making contact with the toolbox. So that is really nice. Also, we've exchanged the front coupler here. So now we have a quick pin coupler, which essentially is just a pin that you put in place and then you lock it, you're good to go. That's really cool. I really like this setup. If you are gonna put some type of theft deterrent on your trailer, coupler you would have to get the kind that locks at that point because you can't just put a you know padlock through the top of your coupler and secure it even though that's not really a great way of securing it but just as an example because the pins right here you might have to find a way to lock that or just simply use the type of vaulted coupler lock that you put on there with an actual key a lot of companies make some really good ones fort knox locks makes one amp lock makes one um, the folks over at infinite rule make one some really great security options there that just act as a better deterrent than 
just putting a small lock anyways. Okay, so the next one is we put the handle here. Now, as you can see, this bolt goes under the handle. That's not a big deal. There's still plenty of room to grab that. The reason why is because if I put it back further this way, it wouldn't give me room for the toolbox over here. So it slides right through. Again, got plenty of room to grip that, so I don't think that's going to be an issue at all. I would have gone with the black rolling jack up here if it was the same price as this one. This one was only like 60 bucks. So very, very affordable, great upgrade, and I love the fact that it has the two rolling wheels on it as well. Plus, there's 12 inches of height adjustment there also, and it's good clearance off of the ground as well whenever we have it hooked up to the actual tow vehicle. So that's really nice. As far as the handle here, it would be nice if there was a locking feature here to kind of lock it into this position. But, you know, worst case scenario, if I feel like that ever becomes a ground clearance issue, which I don't think it will, but if for some reason it does, I'll just zip tie it and just keep it up and out of the way. Okay, moving along down the side of the trailer. So we've done a lot to the deck of the trailer. First, of course, you know that we stained it black, which I think looks absolutely fantastic. We put three of the four pieces of E-Track on here, which is really nice. There's the fourth one right there. Uh, only because I wanted to do it a certain way. I wanted to be able to put a track down the center, and I wanted to be able to put these on the edge, but I didn't want them all the way to the edge, and I didn't want them in on that board. So I put them above two boards, which is actually great if it's wet outside and you want water to go through them, as opposed to kind of sit there and collect and dry out eventually. So we spaced them in slightly, and I think that that actually works out really well. Um, the concern I would have, though, is that E-Track is kind of slippery whenever you drive on it. So if it's wet or raining outside and you have wet tires, you definitely want to be sure you secure whatever you're you know, putting in the back of your trailer really well to the E-Track so it doesn't possibly shift or slide around. But in the event that I don't have the E-Track on me or we're moving something that isn't as convenient to use E-Track with, I also put six D-rings that are bolted in place all the way around the perimeter here. So now we have the ability, of course, to strap things down to the D-rings, and each one of those D-rings has a 300-pound weight rating capacity. So I think we're really good there as well. Another upgrade that we've done is the taillights. So we've switched from the incandescent taillights that came standard on here to some really, really nice LED taillights. So that's nice. LED with the reflector beneath it. Uh, that was a very, very quick install because all we did was essentially cut the wires off of the existing lights, wire the new ones in. We used waterproof heat shrunk connectors as well. So that worked out. But what do you guys think? I think that is pretty much it for today. Next upgrade we'll do to this is going to be these jacks on the back. You probably saw this one sitting here. So the jacks, I only got one of them, so I need to get the other one, and that will probably be shipped out relatively soon. I'm still trying to figure out where I want to put it, either at the very, very back end right here, which could definitely create possibly a ground clearance issue if the front of the trailer is up at all. Perhaps I have a tow vehicle that I don't have a drop shank on. And then that could possibly hit the ground. I don't want to do that. I'm actually thinking it would be better to put it in this area right here. I don't really think there's ever going to be enough leverage on this back foot of the trailer to cause the front to come up, even if I put them here. I might end up putting them right in this spot here, but I'm still trying to figure out exactly where I want to place those. If I put them too far back, again, anytime you go over certain bumps, you know, you go through a Lowe's parking lot and you hit a speed bump, they could drag and I don't want that to happen. But I'll figure that out when the other one comes in. And again, the toolbox is going to be the big one. At first, I was thinking of welding a plate there that I could set the toolbox on. But, you know, uh, my father actually came up with a better idea. He goes, why don't you look up if there's anything designed to mount to the channel itself? So I really couldn't find anything specifically for a toolbox. But what I did find, I think, is pretty dang creative. And I'll show that to you whenever that part comes in. I went ahead and ordered it on Amazon. It should be here tomorrow. And it should make installing the toolbox much simpler and with no need to actually drill into the frame, which is something that I would like to avoid doing if I can. But what do you guys think so far? The trailer looks totally different. The front rolling tongue jack definitely gives it a whole different look, a whole different feel, a much more upscale feel. I love this specific coupler. The quick coupler I think is gonna be super cool to use, very, very simple, and it's gonna have a lot of functionality, which is nice. Plus the LED tail lights, I bench tested them and they are super bright, super intense, and they look fantastic. But these are the upgrades right now. Anything else you think I should do on the bed here? Some folks are going to be like, well, you should have rhino lined it or that. I'm not really concerned about that. I think the black stain looks fantastic. I think the E-Track being all black looks fantastic. I definitely want to do the wheels. 
you know when i put the aluminum rims on they're only like 110 dollars for a pair of them um, i'll swap the tires to them and i think that they will look really really good once i do that but what do you guys think anything special that you uh, you want me to do the trailer that i haven't already done i'd love to know your feedback the other upgrade i will eventually do is put two more braces right here right down the center of that ramp just in case i load something in the center you know you throw a motorcycle on here you throw something that's heavy you, you know you're going to eventually start bending and deforming that expanded steel and it would look a lot better or nicer over time if that were reinforced but i'd love to know your feedback please leave a comment below what do you guys think of the trailer so far pretty miraculous transformation if you consider what it starts its life as and if you saw this sitting on a tractor supply or home depot parking lot would you be more inclined to spend a few hundred dollars more if it came equipped like this? Anyways, please leave a comment below. Again, I'd love your feedback as well as any suggestions you may have. Again, I've thrown around the idea of switching to rubber suspension. Timberin has a great, great, great setup that uh, switches this out. You remove the axle. It's independent rubberized suspension. That might be pretty cool, but definitely uh, still entertaining the idea of putting something else on here. Maybe a torsion axle. Not sure. Anyways, leave a comment below. I'd love to know your thoughts. Guys, if you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up, and we'll talk to you again very soon.